Hello and welcome back to the Telecom TV Summit on the Cloud Native Telco and our panel discussion on how to harness network observability and analytics. Network observability utilizes various data sources to understand the operation of networks from their outputs and how internal states are affecting the objectives and customer experience. So how can telcos best use these tools within their network operations? Well, with the help of today's guests, we are going to find out. And joining me on the program today are Arjun Parekh, who is Senior Manager, Self-Learning Networks Research at BT, Beth Kern, SDN Product Strategies with Verizon, Fatih Nahr, Chief Architect, Telco Partner Solutions at Red Hat, Lachan Burke, Director of RAN for VMware, and Francis Hasem, Principal Analyst with Appledore. Hello everyone, good to see you all and thanks so much for taking part in our discussion today. I'd like to ask first of all, why is the issue of observability so closely linked with cloud native? Fati, can we come to you for your views first? So the major dilemma I think when, when the workload, especially tel telco workloads moving from on-premise to the cloud is the OSS BSS systems that that we used to use on premise within telco networks, kind of try to get their way in into cloud world as well. Since in cloud, we as, as telcos, not necessarily able to collect, observe, and take action on cloud infrastructure because it's not owned by us, right? So I think that's the, that's the key challenge coming into play when the telco workload, special network functions, trying to land on cloud, the metrics, the traces, the logs we used to collect and feed into OSS systems and decision makers, not necessarily as enriched as before, because you may need to revise your solution to plug in cloud APIs and cloud tool sets into your portfolio and knowledge. Thanks, Farty. Uh, Francis, um, you know, we've been covering cloud native and the telco use of cloud native for, for like four or five years now. Um, what, why, why are we seeing observability now so closely linked with cloud native? I, I think it's quite useful actually to almost go back to where does the term observability come from? And in reality, it actually comes out of an engineering concept called control theory. And it's all about you can only control something that you can see, you can observe effectively. So it's basically saying if I can have the data it's fundamentally something that allows me to automate something, to make something um, self-controlled um, fu fundamentally. Um, the term the term has evolved uh, within the IT, but particularly within the hyperscale cloud environment, because you've now got layers of abstraction, which are to a degree independent of each other, which are operating in different ways. In cloud, you're starting to get things potentially being able to spin up, spin down, scale up, scale down. Um, heal, um, all changing in potentially near real time in seconds. And it's not a situation we've really had to deal with that, that, that much within Telco up to date where we've been used to this static box network. Um, but as we introduce cloud native into, into Telco, the concept of how do we assure a particular network function is no longer related to a fixed point, a fixed device. It's related to various pieces of software being brought up and brought down. And you can only bring that, you can only control that if you've got observability of all of it. You can't have it segmented across silos. So that's really the reason why observability is so very important. It's because cloud native is a, is a, it's a new concept for, for, um, for networks. Um, but it's about how, how, how do we expose as much data that we can make uh, real-time decision-making and ultimately enable automation against. Great. Thanks very much for that, Francis. Uh, Beth, if I can move on and link this with uh, telcos, what positive impact can observability have on telcos and their networks? Uh, so... For, for telcos, it's pretty exciting because as was mentioned earlier, our traditional systems did pull a lot of data, but it was very focused on the box. Um, and as we've disaggregated the hardware from the software and, and the <clears throat> various layers away, it's actually, you know, we're hit by, you know, just so much more data 
but it's also so much richer that it allows us to um, use that data in ways that we've never been able to use before. So for example, when you have a static box at all the various nodes, um, it's very difficult to, to redirect traffic you know, if, if let's say there's a workload that all of a sudden spikes for some reason and you want to devote additional traffic, you know, additional um, um, bandwidth to support that workload, um, if you don't have that information about what's going on, and uh, then you can't really respond to it. And, you know, of course, in the traditional network, you really couldn't respond to it. But in the, you know, with virtual networks and software defined networks and, and the cloud capabilities, um, you can, in fact, add that additional bandwidth to cover a, an application that all of a sudden spikes in traffic uh, for whatever reason. And, and so from a cloud, from a telco perspective, it allows us to um, run our networks that much more efficiently. Um, you know, when we're when we're balancing the needs of, you know, providing the bandwidth that's needed for our customers at the same time, you know, optimizing, you know, not overbuilding and optimizing our bandwidth for, you know, what, you know, for our customer needs that the observability adds that capability. Um, and, you know, we're just starting down this path, um, but we are building on that OSS, BSS foundation that we've been using for all these years. Thank you, Beth. Uh, Arjun, what impact are, are you seeing? What impact do you believe that observability can have on telcos and networks? I think uh, following up on Beth's comments there um, around uh, kind of moving on from uh, just monitoring the health of network boxes, I guess the, the key impact really is on being able to understand uh, the full customer experience. Um, and that is all the more important in this kind of uh, cloud ecosystem, um, because where we looked at the health of network boxes before, that was a, perhaps a reasonable proxy to the customer experience because we knew that the network was a fairly static thing. Now that the network becomes dynamic, we really need to understand what is happening to those services rather than just what is happening to those various components in the network. Great, thanks Arjun. And, and Fatih, let me come back to you here because um, you, know, you started off our conversation with the linkage between observability and cloud native. So, so let's get your views on, on how it can, it can positively help telcos. So the, the, as I was hinting, the challenge is not about only technology, but also talent to implement and use and consume that technology, especially from operations team perspective. And also the, I would say the strategic planning perspective. The value of cloud is obviously providing you a sort of infinite scale on demand with the best cost model. That's the value of cloud. And while you're trying to use that, use those benefits, observability gives you an insights how well your solutions are behaving in multi-cloud environment. And since you're collecting back to the point of collecting all these information and insights and feeding into your decision or control loop as in the old OSS world or slash BSS world, you kind of need to a little bit act a little bit more carefully and smart way because cloud is not, I would say cheap. Cloud should be used really carefully when you need it with the scale, with the user experience, and, and with all this observability will give you insights about how much you are getting out of the value that you're paying for. In that sense, still, everybody thinks that, oh, we are moving from box world to the abstraction layers. Now we don't really worry about the infrastructure or network or storage, but we care about the application layer. It's not necessarily true, all right? So you still need to care about network metrics you still need to care about compute performance you still need to carry worry about storage availability this is the real life facts for your solutions and overall observability solution you're leveraging also plug in these cloud i would say constructs for monitoring metrics and traces and logs will enrich your observability overall solution and get you a better spot to act smart and intelligent for consuming someone else's infrastructure Thanks, Farty. And uh, Lorcan, what about your views on the, the impact observability can have? Yeah, I, I think a, a lot of it comes uh, in, in moving from that traditional vertical integrated box oriented world where you had pretty much 
your KPIs and your performance metrics were defined by the vendor of those components. At least it, uh, the observability allows us to create some frameworks that, that support that service-oriented uh, debugging or support or operational uh, drive for those networks. So a lot, a lot of what we can do with these observability frameworks allows us to support that multi-cloud domain and help operations move from you know, going to a particular data center, to a particular row, to a particular rack, pressing a reset button, all the way to having more automated uh, modern frameworks for looking after the networks. Uh, and then with that data, we can do better planning and better uh, dimensioning rather than guessing at sizing based on, on uh, call models that we think we understand. We can start creating uh, real, real models for planning and forecasting demand. Good to hear. Thanks, Lorcan. Um, let me quickly uh, just go back to Beth for some final comments on, on this question. Beth. So um, these, all of the comments have been really great. I'd like to add that, you know, let's not get lost in the telco perspective and, and let's focus on one of the really cool things about observability is we now have more information about the applications themselves, which is what the customers, of course, are using the network for. So, um, you know, I think there's been a lot of work uh, recently with adding tools that allow us to actually monitor the application workflows as they go through the networks and, and allow, that will allow us to tune the performance of the networks to suit the applications. And uh, that's pretty exciting. Great. Well, great comments, everyone. Thank you for those. Um, Arjun, how does observability sit alongside what we might call more traditional network monitoring? I guess for me, uh, observability is really the evolution of monitoring. Um, firstly, it should be uh, more multi-domain. It should give you that kind of holistic view. Um, it's, it's analogous uh, to me from the move from, from kind of data into information and then into knowledge. Um, where uh, you know the, the stream of data on its own tells you nothing until you you know until you understand it and organize it, um, and eventually you want to end up with with knowledge, which is kind of essentially actionable insight. So you know what is it actually telling me? Is it telling me something I can act upon? And particularly if we're talking about uh, automating our networks, uh, then observability is is the key to being able to to make automated decisions and and good quality decisions. So it's it should be multi-domain. I guess the uh, kind of increasing use of AI is going to be absolutely critical to observability. Um, and then, uh, and I think it's also it's also necessary um, in, in this kind of new cloud world, particularly to manage the, the complexity as, as we've been hearing, um, the fact that we now have you know, a network that is perhaps a flexible entity. It's not just a kind of fixed collection of boxes, uh, say as, as we've discussed previously, but now the network can change with time and, and kind of respond to the needs of the services that are putting demands upon it. Great, thank you, Arjun. And uh, Fatih, you'd like to um, add some comments to what uh, Arjun was saying? Yeah, I mean, those are really great points, mainly about actionable insights, sitting on top of the information and data you collected, cleaned up and organized. But that data, where is that data coming from? And so with the cloud and with the cloud migration, we started to see more platform tools and services such as Service Mesh that is collecting all this data real time from your workloads and also feeding that data, say, into a data mesh where all this data correlated to each other and kind of feeding into your machinery where your control logic is running. I think this is great facility of cloud introducing these toolboxes, not necessarily developed and maintained by applications or telco vendors, but they are consuming them from a platform, say, service mesh, from the platform to be used rather than they reinvent these by themselves. Great, thanks, Farty. And Francis, earlier you touched on the, the origin of observability. How, how do you see it sitting alongside uh, network monitoring? In reality, it, network it, it, observability is really just a continuation of network monitoring. It is, it is the monitoring of the network. It is the management of telemetry from the network. I think the really big, really big difference between it is just the openness of of observability, the idea that you are open to get any of the data from the network and you're open as to the use you make of that data. And I think that that allows us to move from a situation which is wh where to use the US Defense Secretary's 
we currently really in our network monitoring deal with known knowns. We deal with the KPIs, we know the measurements we know from the network. A lot of observability provides you the data to start looking at the unknown unknowns to, and to start understanding some of the co much more complicated um, interactions between, part, between parts of the network. I think the other important thing is just to say network monitoring, we, we don't realize how the leaps and bounds that have been made um, in 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 terms of being able to get data um, out out of devices. A lot a lot of the reasons why things are closed, why there's KPIs, or why things are monitored in the network was just simply the network couldn't handle this amount of data. But but what we now have an opportunity because it is now increasingly more able to do that, or be more programmed to get the data if we need it that we start to look at um, observability also being the framework by which we can start to open up things that are currently hidden behind EMS uh, systems or proprietary systems, a lot more access to the underlying data. And we are seeing that um, to a degree with some of the initiatives, particularly the NWDAF initiatives in the core network, the exposure of data that can be used there, and some and a lot of the aspects of the data data management to support the RIC in open RAM. Thanks, Francis. Well, look, we'll come back to um, Arjun in a minute, but I just want to get some comments from Beth first. So I, ha I have another, another a number of comments about this. First of all, I think um, this new observability has really given us uh, a much better tools to, to enforce SLAs. Um, and and also you know automate that the um, the you know if there is a problem automate the the credits um, and that's that's a boon because it actually saves the telco money um, if we don't have to chase around and figure out well what was what was down how long you know we can just say oh it's all in the it's all in the it's all in the tools we've we've captured all that stuff um, and I think also. Um, there's been a lot of work around developing APIs. I know um, MEF is working on a number, uh, TM Forum are working on APIs that allow uh, our you know, telco customers to pull data from our data lakes and then pull them into their own tools. And that's something that was you know, never traditionally done. You know, there was always a very proprietary uh, hold on on the data and on the tools that were developing the data so it was a little bit of a black box and uh and now by by exposing it through apis and allowing our customers to see that data i think that increases the the confidence that you know we're delivering the services that they need and that you know they can react to that Thank you, Beth. And uh, let's hear some final comments on this one from Arjun. And um, thank you. So I, I guess kind of quickly two related points. So one is is just the kind of enormous power of taking multiple data sets and you know enriching data with data from other sources. Um, and then just to kind of touch back on Francis's point around open RAN, I think that's that's a really great example of why observability is, is needed because the disaggregation of the network means that you might have if essentially network components coming from multiple different vendors and if you're looking at all of those as kind of independent pieces in the chain you're just not going to get that holistic picture you need to kind of join all of that up to get that kind of end-to-end -end service view to understand what is happening in your network and that's where observability is going to be absolutely crucial good points thanks very much uh, everyone um when we've been talking about observability, we do tend to talk a lot about troubleshooting and, and reactive actions. But Farty, uh, can we use observability for more proactive usages? Yeah, definitely, definitely. So as being in the field and having these experiences, and there was this question before, I think, about the best practices and what, what to do, what to, not to do things. Before we go to observability, what you're using beneath the observability to reach the solution level of observability, say service mesh. We try to use that service mesh approach to collect data, feed into our observability layer. And we saw that, especially with 5G, that approach, that solution with service mesh didn't really address the need. And it actually created a lot of pain points for bottlenecking for the traffic. Then we try to find other ways to collect the data directly from networking infrastructure, as the SDN mentioned before. And in, in that perspective, when we feed into observability layer, what can we get out of this? It could be predictive maintenance, you can do. You could do service assurance, you can do revenue assurance, all that assurances that is pointed by TM forum standards, you can go and tackle. 
Great. And Francis, um, some comments from you about uh, the more proactive use cases for observability. Well, well, de well def definitely. I'd, I'd, I'd start with the obvious thing, you know, come back to the control theory thing, which is basically if you're troubleshooting and you're reactive, you're not controlling something. So actually something's gone wrong, really. Um, so, uh, you know, observability should really be at the center of, of doing things, doing things much more proactively. I think one of the, 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 the aspects, we can talk about the almost the, the real time aspects of it, but I think one of the other areas I think that uh, a lot of observability will do is the longer term planning actions and the capacity management. Um, actions. At the moment, we tend to react to capacity shortages. We get hotspots. We, we we address them when they become hotspots rather than when they're becoming hot hotspots. Um, observability, a better sense of where things are, can give us a much better implication of do we do we need to enhance um, uh, ca ca capacity, whether that's compute storage or even, even network ahead of the curve in order that we don't get that reactive problem of, of a problem. Um, I, I'll use an example. It's, it's, it's a nice example, which is that, you know, that there's a very different approach in cloud. Uh, the hyperscalers is that they tend to invest quite heavily in more CPUs, a lot of redundancy in order that when things fail, for example, it doesn't bring the whole, whole uh, capacity down. Telecom hasn't traditionally done that, but it could be in a position to be much more proactive about is it better for me to put, I don't know, 20 CPUs into an edge piece of kit versus just one to do the immediate action? Because I know that the capacity is coming through. I, I can see, I can observe service take up. I can make those kind of decisions up, 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 up front. And that might help in terms of proactive, because if, if I'm being proactive in capacity management, I'm avoiding these reactive hotspot trouble, trouble scenarios. Interesting. Thank you, Francis. And Lorcan, are, are you seeing a more proactive use for observability? I think we're, we're Beth was getting to with some of this. There's actually a, a big part of the traditional product management or service creation process that can be helped with, with observability. If at least we know uh, in, a, in a clearer way what network functions or service capabilities are being used by particular customers, it allows us to prototype new services faster, allows us to figure out how to scale them, little bit, same question, do I put 20 CPUs on a site or do I put one, right? I mean, if I have a better view as to what's being used and where the growth is, leverage AI or machine learning to start driving some of those decisions, I'll probably get a better view as to what, prop, what services are profitable, which ones should get retired and which ones should be expanded. So I think there's a lot of benefit that observability can drive in that product lifecycle and product creation domain. Sure, thanks, Lorcan. Uh, a lot of lot more comments to get through here. So, um, Arjun, let me come to you first. Uh, so, I just wanted to touch on predictive maintenance um, briefly, as that's a, an active area of research for me. Um, and I guess um, you know the kind of key point about the use of AI as well, um, as, as as well as kind of looking at that kind of uh, holistic picture and, and kind of looking at all of the data that we've got is that uh, you know with traditional monitoring, maybe a lot of the um, a lot of the kind of data that looks less important gets kind of ignored or thrown away because there is not kind of time for people to kind of manually uh, look at everything that's in the data. Um, with AI, we can you know, hopefully kind of discover uh, the sort of smaller hints in the data that are going to tell us that maybe something is going to happen in the future. Thanks, Arjun. Uh, Beth, let's um, come across to you for, for some of your views on the, the proactive use of observability. Well, I was going to build on some of the uh, things that uh, Lorcan um, mentioned, uh, which is that, um, you know, unlike um, cloud, you know, cloud service providers, uh, building out excess capacity to support um, proactive um, uh, perform, you know, management of the network can be actually quite expensive. Um, I think with the um, increased uh, support for the fixed wireless access. I think we're going to see more capabilities, you know, using the observability to be able to uh, to tune the networks to to you know provide the extra capacity when needed um, more flexibly. I mean, when it's a box at the edge, uh, you know, the only way to uh, to build in excess capacity is to overbuild um, and. You know, we do that, but it, that's expensive for a customer. Uh, they might not be paying for it right away, but, um, you know, it's it's built into some of the MPLS networks. 
Um, and you know, now as companies are moving away from the expense of um, purchasing MPLS networks with their higher um, higher SLAs and you know better performance, uh, you know, we have to get smarter about how we how we tune the performance and use it more efficiently. Sure thing. Thanks, Beth. And Fati, let's come across to you for some uh, additional comments on, on this particular question. So back to back to Francis' control theory, I want to answer with the game theory. So yeah, it's good, it's good that you have a, we have a mentality of collecting and acting on those data proactively, but yet the limitations of what you can do with data, even when you have the best algorithms and best trained algorithms out there, you we got to be a little bit careful about as in the game theory, you cannot, you know, aim the top of the mountain. You got to have a middle path to have a step-by-step -step approach, what you can get out of that data versus the big expectations. And when I was working in the, in the cloud render, we had this, oh, whenever we see a problem, custom says, let's, let's do AI, let's do ML. Like throw an AI ML as a keyword to the problem, it doesn't solve it really. So you got to have a better judgment careful approach to each particular problem. Say, I want to do better service assurance. I want to do better predictive, predictive maintenance. I want to do better, provide better SLAs end to end. So gather the data from different layers of the solution, starting from bottom infrastructure, then platform, then service layer, and harmonize them in one pod if you can, or different data lakes, and crunch them with the different algorithms and correlate those insights. There are different, better ways of doing things to get better outcomes. What I'm trying to hint you here, there's no single bullet to address every need. So, and also be cautious about what you're aiming with the phased approaches. I think Arjun will gonna be giving us better insights about how well we can implement ML AI for proactive actions based on observability as he's the AI ML guy here. Thanks, Farty. Yes, and uh, we've, we've, we've had a few theories today so far. So let's move on to strategies. Um, what's the best approach for telcos to harness the full capabilities of observability? Francis, let me, let me start with you. You know, what strategy, if any, should they follow? I think I think the thing to recognise is that it will be a it will be a hybrid situation. But but start but my my point would be to start on the uh, the, the the road to observability is really to think about how you're going to disaggregate ultimately disaggregate what is currently very highly tied up in integrated uh, NMSs and EMSs. Um, or 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 specialist uh, network mon monitoring tools. So I think one of the er one of the areas in which you can look at, uh, and we see this with, um, the, I guess the, the prime open RAN um, um, observability use case, which is Rakuten Mobile. What they've what they've sought to do uh, in the initial term is to put an observability layer across everything, so that even if an underlying EMS may not give real-time data, it may only give a KPI every uh, 15 minutes. The usage of that data becomes part of an overall whole rather than it remains within the, the particular silo of that, uh, of that area. Um, putting that observed, I think the first step has to be put that common layer across that all data can be brought together can be brought together to best point it can be brought together with the with the with the data lake um but more and, and more importantly not just with the data lake but also it can be it can be start to be consumed by real real-time analytics um making decisions particularly for some of the um the more real-time control uh, control aspects or uh, uh, control aspects of it i think stage two is having put that in place it becomes the leverage that you can go back to an element management um, provider to say, look, we've got to open this up. We, 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 we need integration at, at a lower level. We need the ability to get hold of that data at a, at a lower level. But, but baby steps, take those, take those steps. First of all, disaggregate out what is it at the moment integrated silos for particular technologies, particular vendors, and make that generally available. Great. Thanks very much, Francis. A stage and stepped approach there. Well, um, I, I know you all want to come in on this particular question. So let me start first of all with, with Arjun for, for his views about how telcos and the community should move forward and, and implement observability to, for the maximum success. Um, and I think, um, I guess one of the fundamental steps I really want to emphasize uh, for all telcos is, is uh, a real 
um, uh, kind of drive to data quality because uh, you know observability uh, you know only exists with data and it only works with good quality data and that's that's the kind of uh, absolute keystone um, and then I guess to to address maybe Fate's comments around um, uh, kind of where AI can be useful I think uh, you know telcos increasingly need to become AI literate in order to understand where AI will add value, which is uh, yeah, absolutely not everywhere and not every single problem is going to be solved by AI machine learning, but there are there are lots of you know, areas where it is going to play a really key part in that observability picture. Um, and telcos need to be uh, you know, very savvy about how they deploy AI machine learning in the right areas in order to kind of build up that, uh, yeah, that observability uh, kind of solution that they, that they need to get to. Great. Thank you, Arjun. And uh, Lorcan, let's come across to you for, for your views about how telco should go about this. I, I think it, it, it depends a little bit as, as the domains evolve. Right? I mean, IT has had a lot of access to some of the cloud native tools for a number of years. So the, the traditional in-house systems, billing, customer care, a lot has been there. The core network is increasingly getting access to, to those tool sets. And then the, the, the RAM, as we evolve, the likes of the, the, uh, the different RICs, near real-time, non-real-time RICs, they're exposing information that traditionally was very, very hidden behind uh, vendor proprietary interfaces. So the, but the key, key to making all that work and correlating value for either product development or operations or the end customer is having some common tooling and approaches to doing that. Um, that the, the advantage, at least, of, of cloud native is it, it leapfrogs us from a community that was stuck in maybe very legacy closed systems into a bro much broader community of developers and people who can start using a variety of tools to, to deliver outcomes for the rest of the business. So I think a, lo a lot of it starts with getting, getting different teams in the business access to those skills and training around use of that data. And, and creating common approaches to, to exposing the value of that to the rest of the business. Thanks very much, Lorcan. Uh, Beth, you know, is there a clear-cut strategy about how that telco should follow, um, or are we, is it still the early days? And, and there are, there's, there's no uh, one-size-fits-all approach here. Uh, definitely no one-size-fits-all. Uh, you know, it's not that the data isn't out there; it is. Um, but it's all over the place. It turns out that absolutely every single telco has a different way of, of getting back to the main theme here, different way of pulling the data, different way of categorizing the data. And uh, that actually makes it really difficult to use these AIML tools to even test that they're valid. And, and I think that there's a lot of um, you know, increasing understanding that you know, AIML is not a panacea. Uh, there's a lot of bias that's introduced into that, um, into the results, you know, based on, you know, garbage in, you get garbage out. And uh, so, you know, I think, I'm very excited about, um, you know, the potential, um, but we need better observability tools. We need, um, you know, and before we develop best practices, I think we really need to, to have a better understanding of, you know, what data we need and 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 how to best use it. Thank you, Beth. Um, Farty, I'm going to come across to you for final comments on, on this particular question. So last question of the panel as well uh, about how telcos can best use and implement observability. I think we are repeating the same pattern, like collecting data, creating a central place to act based on this data. Instead, with cloud native, we can distribute this intelligence and using observability within, within intelligence at, at, at the application layer. That's why we keep promoting the operator framework. Back to that project, there's another project called Nephew that is promoting operators for telco applications. So these telco applications bundled as operators can be self-aware, could be autonomous, collect their own data and act based on that data they collect for healing, for scaling, say, say creating additional insights for external entities. So what I'm trying to say here, let's not only focus on central point for observability, but also distribute that observability capability and actioning on that at the application layer with the operator framework. Farty, thank you very much indeed. We must leave it there. I am sure we're going to get a lot of audience questions on this particular topic. Thank you all very much for taking part in our discussion today and sharing your views. 
Now, if you are watching this on day one of our Cloud Native Telco Summit, then please send us your questions and we'll answer them in our live Q&A program, which follows this show. So don't go away. Keep watching, please. And if you've missed any of the programs from day one, don't worry. They'll all be available to watch on demand from tomorrow. For now, though, thanks for watching and goodbye. Thank you.